Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is the difference between extrusive, intrusive, and lateral luxation. But before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. Now let's start with what is extrusive luxation. From the near, extrusive, which means that it is equal to exterior, so the tooth will be displaced incisally or outward. Now, what are the features that you will be seeing uh, from the name extrusive, so exterior, so the tooth will be displaced outward, so the tooth will appear longer than normal or longer than the adjacent tooth. In addition to that, the tooth will be mobile and it will be tender to percussion both vertically and laterally. So, which means that when you tap on the tooth, it will be, uh, the patient will tell you that I feel pain when you tap on my tooth, which means that these are all features suggesting the patient is having extrusive luxation. What about the opposite to extrusive? It is intrusive that you will be seeing uh, from the name extrusive going inside interior. So the tooth will be displaced apically into the alveolar bone into the alveolar bone, which means that crushing of the alveolar bone can take place because we are uh, displacing the tooth inside the bone. The alveolar bone is the, uh, the bone that is holding the teeth in place. So when the tooth is going inside the bone, which means that we are doing crushing, we are crushing the alveolar bone. We are just, this is crushing the alveolar bone at the end. So what are the features for intrusive? It is opposite to extrusive, going inside, interior. So the tooth will be relaxation is that the tooth is shorter than normal. In addition to that, the tooth is not mobile and the high pitched metallic sound when you tap on the tooth, that is the characteristic feature for intrusive relaxation, having a high pitched metallic sound and the pulp is dead, it is necrotic, it is necrotic. So no, uh, no use if you are doing a cold test or sensibility test or vitality test, the tooth will not respond because it, will be, it, it, is, uh, the, it is dead, the pulp is dead, it is necrotic. So here is a picture. Uh, as you can see, now uh, I wanna ask you, uh, and you can write the answer in the comment uh, section below, or you can answer yourself. Is this an extrusive or intrusive laxation and why? But for now, I will answer the question. It is extrusive laxation since the tooth appears longer than normal. In comparison with the intrusive laxation, the tooth is inward, inside, so it appears shorter than normal. So this picture is for intrusive laxation. Now let's talk about the last injury we have, lateral laxation. So here the lateral laxation from the name, lateral, so the tooth is displaced laterally, either labially or palatally, either forward or backward, either forward or backward. Now um, from this picture you cannot tell whether it is lateral luxation, intrusive or extrusive luxation. But I will show you a more clearer picture showing you the lateral luxation. Here is it. This picture, as you can see, the tooth is displaced palatally, which means that backward. So this confirm for you lateral luxation. The patient is having lateral luxation. Now, what are the features for lateral luxation? They are similar to that of the intrusive luxation. As you can see, high-pitched metallic sound when you tap on the tooth. The tooth is not mobile, similar to intrusive luxation. The pulp is dead, necrotic, because there will be crushing of the alveolar bone is seen as well. Okay, so the similar clinical features for the intrusive luxation, except that for intrusive luxation, the tooth appears shorter than normal, whereas in lateral luxation, only by viewing this uh, type of image, you will determine whether the patient is having lateral luxation, or you can confirm your diagnosis lateral luxation if you can see the tooth is displaced either uh, labially or palatally or 
forward or backward at the end. Now, uh, so we talked about the uh, what is the difference between intrusive, uh, lateral, extrusive, laxation. Now, of course, we need to provide a treatment for the patient. Not only we, uh, we will stop by this discussion. So what is the treatment for all these? Now, regarding the treatment, once you see your child having such type of laxation, regardless, intrusive, extrusive, lateral, you need to provide an immediate treatment for the patient by sending him to the dentist immediately. So the treatment that we will provide as a dentist is immediate repositioning of the tooth with splinting, with a flexible splint. And what is the time of splinting that is required? This depends on the, uh, on the type of injury that you're having. This. Now, previously in my previous video, I talked about the concussion and subluxation, and I said that in concussion, the tooth is not mobile, so therefore no splinting is required. But for subluxation, because the tooth is mobile, so we'll need two weeks of splinting. Splinting time is two weeks. Similar to extrusive laxation, because the injury is not that significant in comparison with lateral laxation and intrusive laxation because here you will have crushing of the alveolar bone is seen so the alveolar bone is damaged in a lateral and intrusive so we need more time for the healing to take place so therefore the lateral and intrusive laxation require four weeks of splinting time is very important now you can see in my slide there is avulsion what is avulsion what is uh, uh, the concept behind avulsion and everything, I'll discuss it later in my videos. But today I'm just focusing on these three types of laxation. Now here, uh, how we do a splinting, we will bring uh, a wire and this wire, we will place it on the teeth that are suffering from the type, this type of laxation. Place GIC, light cure. We will place basically the GIC in the middle third of the tooth, light cure, and then this is then the wire will be splinted. This is how you will do splinting for the teeth. And the splinting time, as I said previously, depends on the type of injury your child or the adult is having. Two weeks for subluxation and extrusive laxation and four weeks for intrusive and lateral laxation. That's it. I am done. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer your questions uh, in the comment section below. And please don't forget to press the like button, comment down if you have any questions and subscribe for more and more videos.